podcast and you were saying that the witness you could you could like boot up in like a, a couple seconds is that what you said or um, um, it was it was about seven seconds when we okay. released it on steam you know it, um, it's like with i i have grown accustomed to unity just being bloated like when i click the play button here's what i do when i when i click the play button i immediately pull out social media and scroll instagram for like <laughs> yeah 20 seconds yeah. or when i make a change to my code i'll just Okay, I, mean, I guess I'll scroll on Instagram for just a little bit. And in my head, I, it's just the norm. You just accustomed, it's like you get accustomed to like the US government having bloat. It's like, well, this is just the way it is. Yeah, I mean, that's and, just, yeah. And so my question to you is, 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 is it, you, you, you've expressed frustration on many podcasts about, you're frustrated that people don't seem to care. And I think they don't care because they don't they don't know the alternative. They have no idea that it's possible to have software that isn't bloated. You know, um, do you think that do you think that something like Godot or open source is the solution? Well, it, it hasn't been yet. So yeah. the question is, uh, you know, what what changes there? I mean, so so in open source generally. Um, my observation is just that a lot of these programs are just super buggy. I mean, obviously there's a few that are like mainstays yeah. that are, that are well, relatively well, uh, engineered and maintained, but really if you pick a random open source program, it's not that good. And so you have to ask what, what was the problem? So the open source thesis was right. You have all these eyes on the code from around the world and all these people who can make changes and, and so that should be really good for quality and speed and all these things, but it doesn't seem to be. Mm -hmm. um, so, so that's a question. Now, in terms of Godot specifically, um, I have never used it, so I can't, I can't say anything about that. Um, yeah. Especially not its trajectory over time, yeah. um, because. Uh, you know, you have to have experience using something for a while. But I will say, so there's an open source compiler engine that almost everybody in the world uses now called LLVM, right? Mm -hmm. and for the programming language I'm working on, we use it. Uh, we don't have to use it, but we use it, uh, you know, if you want to generate code that does optimization, um, we use their optimizer. Um, and so it's a very useful component. Um, they update it pretty often. Right. Yeah. And approximately every time we up, because we try to skip a couple versions and do, you know, whatever, um, it usually gets between 15 and 40% slower every time we move to a new version. And, you know, for exactly wow. the same workload, because we're like compiling the same thing and we know what it is. And, and so just like, so any, anytime you have a percentage change like that, that's iterated over time, like let's say something gets 10% slower every year, right? That's actually, that's an exponential, right? That's 10% interest. And if pe people have heard all about how interest rates make these big parabolas, right? Yeah. Um, that's what it, so, so one of the sicknesses in the software industry is that people will say like, Oh, I added some features and it's only 8% slower. That's that's obviously worth it. And it's like no because that's an iterated process that a lot of developers are doing and so you're you're like paying 8% interest on speed every year where it's it's more like gaining interest but as if money was a very bad thing to have, right? <laughs> and so no, just nobody takes this seriously. I don't know. Do you think that um do you think that the hardware manufacturers want the software to be bad? There's certainly uh, is there an the incentive past, there? In the past, that was a clear incentive, I think. Yeah. Um, but nowadays, at least for CPUs, like CPUs don't get that much faster. You know, for <laughs> for Intel CPUs, yeah, they're definitely not getting much faster anymore. AMD was doing some cool multi-core stuff. But single core is not necessarily getting faster. You know, Apple had had some pretty big jumps for a bit, and now they're kind of leveling out, right? Mm -hmm. um, Qualcomm, same thing. So, like, unless we invent a radically new CPU technology, um, 
I don't know if that dynamics in play anymore. So just to give people, I mean, this is this is going pretty far back in history. But when I started my first game company in the '90s, right, computers were getting so fast, like regular desktop computers, like you would have today, with like a a 486 CPU in them. Um, they were getting faster at such a speed that we would tend to buy two computers a year because you could just get you could get a computer that would make your development 30 percent faster in six mm. months right and like that's just not how it is like i actually just swapped out the computer that i have at home but the the desktop that i program on and game on and all this stuff um i had since 2019 and i swapped out the gpu right at some point but yeah. that was it and it was fine. 